Thank you for the introduction, Anna, and thank you for the invitation. I'm very happy to talk at this workshop. Um, I'm going to talk about joint work with Thomas Gala, Maria Kummerantz, Vierosen, um, that has also already appeared in the SIAM journal on applied algebra and geometry. Um, and the talk is going to be more algebraic, um, but hopefully, um, I will try to give the background you need for understanding it. So just uh, let's recall an nth order tensor is rank one, if it can be written as the tensor product of uh, n vectors, like uh, you can see over here. Um, in particular, in this notation, it means that the i1, i2 uh, to in entry um, is the product of the corresponding uh, parameters from the n vectors. And here you can see a rank one example. So it's a third order uh, two by two by two tensor. So this is the uh, front slice and here you can see the back slice. Um, and it can be written as a tensor product of three vectors. So it's uh, rank one. And this talk is going to be um, about the following questions. So given a partial tensor, meaning that we observe only some entries of the tensor, but not all of them, can it be completed to a rank one tensor? How many rank one completions there exist? And um, how to find a rank one completion? So, and one important thing, so I'm going to talk both about complex and uh, real rank one completability, and uh, these notions are different. So consider this two by two by two tensor over here. So question marks are the entries that we don't know. Um, so we have four observed entries. So this partial tensor can be completed to two rank one complex tensors, but not a rank one real tensor. Okay, and how you can see it is uh, you can use this uh, parameterization and construct the corresponding polynomial system. Um, and if you look at this polynomial system, it's uh, quite easy to see that it has complex solutions, but no uh, real solutions. I'm going to talk about both the complex and real uh, completion. So there have been at least two excellent talks uh, during this program already on um, low rank tensor completion. So in the first workshop, there was uh, Ankur Moitra's talk on tensor decompositions and their applications part two. And then um, in the data science uh, workshop, there was a Mingyuan's talk on low rank tensor completion. And um, so to get, um, so these are more from the optimization perspective. As I said, I'm going to talk more on algebraic perspective. I really recommend this uh, two talks. So what I'm not going to talk about today, but uh, what are the uh, three main directions in the study of low rank tensor completion? So the first one is the nuclear uh, norm minimization for matrices of tensors. So that I would say were the first algorithms for uh, low rank tensor completion. And then uh, this was extended to nuclear norm uh, minimization for tensors and then its uh, relaxations. And then also uh, non-convex methods. Um, and today we are going to take um, more algebraic approach where we are going to talk about the structure of the problem of uh, rank one uh, tensor completion. Okay, so a little bit notion, uh, notation, sorry. So um, we index the entries of the tensor by set D um, and entries of a partial tensor by uh, the set E, that's a subset of D. So um, for the example here, so uh, D is then um, given by this triples uh, in two by two by two of size two by two by two. And here you can see the indices of uh, this partial tensor. Okay. A flattening of a tensor is a matrix that is obtained from the tensor by partitioning the modes into two non-empty uh, subsets. So here you can see 
one flattening of this tensor, but there are um, th three different flattenings in this case. Um, and flattenings uh, play important role for rank one tensors because a tensor um, has a rank at most one if and only if all two by two minors of all its flattenings vanish. So now we can go to the matrix case and check the uh, two by two minors of this uh, flattenings. Okay, so this condition uh, of two by two minors of the flattenings allows us to define an ideal. So um, let I be the ideal generated by two by two minors of all flattenings of the tensor um, of variables. So instead of a numeric tensor, we just have a variable for each entry. So for an example over here, so uh, this is for this two by two by two tensor. Um, so this two by two minors uh, will be this uh, binomials um, of degree two. And, and if you don't know what an ideal is, then so here there are these polynomials and then um, ideal generated by these polynomials is the, all the polynomial consequences uh, of these polynomials that you can see here. Then we consider also a second ideal that we denote by IE. And this is the intersection of this ideal over here. Um, with a smaller smaller polynomial ring where we only have variables that correspond to the observed entries. Okay, so it is not true that you can just take the uh, binomials over here uh, that have entries in the set E. So it's more complicated than that. One would have to compute Kramer basis. So I will uh, skip that part, but um, it's an idea that we get from this idea I. And in this particular example, the, um, this intersection of I with the smaller polynomial ring is the idea generated by zero. So there are actually no non-zero polynomials uh, in the intersection. And this idea we will use um, to, uh, to characterize when a rank one, uh, when a partial tensor is rank one completable. But before, uh, I can give the main result. So let me, uh, I have to give a few more definitions. So fix a mode J and fix an index uh, IJ, a maximal slice of a partial tensor um, is, is the tensor with the index set, um, sorry. Um, sorry, E's are uh, entries. Uh, where we fix this um, J mode to be uh, index IJ. Okay, and here you can see a maximal slice of this three by three uh, tensor. And we call a partial tensor zero consistent if every zero entry is contained in a maximal dimensional slice consisting of uh, only zero entries. So where does this definition come from? So if you have a rank one tensor and if it has a zero entry, uh, then because rank one tensor is a tensor, tensor product of um, vectors, then uh, this means there has to be one zero in this uh, vectors that define the tensor product. And this means that we get the slice of zeros in our rank one tensor. Okay, so let's denote by V of IE the set of common zeros of all the polynomials um, in this idea I. So all the solutions to the polynomials and uh, common solutions to the polynomials in the idea I. Um, so then it turns out that a partial tensor complex, a partial complex tensor TE equals the restriction of a rank one tensor T to E if and only if the following two conditions hold. So first that the partial tensor TE is zero consistent. Um, and the second one is that the variety um, of the ideal IE 
contains a TE. Okay. So what this is saying here, we constructed this ideal I from the uh, two by two minors of all the flattenings. And then we took the intersection of this ideal um, with the polynomial ring only in our observed entries. And it's saying that uh, this partial tensor has to be a um, common zero of the polynomials in this uh, smaller ideal. And this proposition also leads to an algebraic algorithm for finding uh, rank one completions. So we can substitute this TE uh, into the ideal I, and then um, actually do that Krebner basis, and then use that for uh, solving for the missing entries. So, and note here, it's complex numbers, and this is important. I'm going to uh, get back to it. So this proposition is not true over real numbers. So if uh, even if you have a real partial tensor and it belongs to this um, solution set of IE, um, it doesn't mean that there is a real rank one uh, completion. Um, Related to this, I would like to talk about rank one matrix completion because I think it's just very nice. So um, rank one matrix completion can be studied combinatorially using graph theory. So if you have a partial matrix, um, then you can construct a bipartite graph associated to matrix, uh, to this matrix. So you can think uh, the vertices in one part correspond to the rows and the vertices in the other part correspond to columns. And we have an edge uh, whenever the corresponding entry is observed. Um, and then a partial matrix satisfies the second condition in the proposition. So it is um, that it's in the uh, V of IE, if and only if on every cycle, the product over the edges with even indices equals the product over the edges with odd indices. So in this particular example, we don't have any cycles. So this means that the second condition is automatically satisfied. But if we would have a cycle over here, then we would need to have that uh, the entry, uh, these two entry, the product of this entry and this entry is equal to the product of this entry and this entry. Um, and these, this condition about the cycles, it has been rediscovered at least three times or like, okay, the first time it wasn't rediscovered, it was discovered in uh, 1989. Uh, by the uh, paper by Kohan, Johnson, Rodman, uh, and Berdeman, and then again in 2006. And then there is a paper from around 2010 by Louis Deran and co authors where they also come up with this cycle property. Um, and this observation about cycles um, follows from the explicit description of the generators of the universal Krobner basis uh, in terms of cycles on the bipartite graph. Okay, so there is this nice relation between algebra and combinatorics. Um, in the tensor case, this, uh, the combinatorial interpretations break down because the universal Krobner basis is not square free. So it won't be any more true that we can consider uh, cycles um, in some graphs. And as far as I know, there is no combinatorial uh, characterization for uh, rank one tensor completion. Okay, as I said before, that this proposition does not hold for um, over real numbers. So if you consider this partial tensor, then recall this um, ideal. Uh, idea of E, or this idea over here, it was the zero ideal, meaning that the variety is everything. So in particular, that this partial tensor uh, belongs to the variety. But uh, as, as I discussed earlier, that this um, partial tensor does not have a rank one completion over real numbers. So, so, it's, um, so it's important that here we have an algebraically closed field. Um, and where it comes from actually is uh, 
extension theorem in algebraic geometry, and that requires an algebraically closed field. So this is um, this is the reason behind this. Okay. So to study the rank one tensor completion over real numbers, uh, we consider the following linear map from set D, where D was the index set of the entries of our tensor, to set D1 plus uh, up to Dn, where um, Di, uh, Di was the dimension of the ith mode. Um, and Ei maps to Ej, comma Ij, um, sorry, to the sum of Ej, comma Ij. So the sum is uh, from 1 to n. And then uh, Ij is the j component of the vector i. And we will denote the matrix of this linear map by A. It's a 0, 1 matrix. And um, the rows of this matrix A are um, correspond to the parameters, or like these vectors in the tensor product. And the columns of the matrix A correspond to the um, entries of the tensor, or like the indices of the entries. And let AE be the matrix whose columns are exactly the columns of A with indices in E. So we take um, sub matrix of um, A. So let's see an example over here. So for this two by two by two case, um, we have uh, six parameters. So it's six rows. And we have eight columns because the tensor has eight entries. And this column, for example, corresponds to the entry 111. So um, the first two uh, entries correspond to the first vector. Um, and because it's entry one, it's one over here and etc. And here we take a sub matrix um, of A corresponding to the columns uh, indexed by uh, these triples. Um, and this matrix AE uh, plays a very important role for the real completability. But before that, I need to give you one more definition. So let L uh, be a lattice in set M. The saturation of L is the lattice where we take um, also all alphas in set M such that K times alpha uh, is in the lattice for some non-zero uh, integer K. So let's see an example. So let's consider the lattice span by the columns um, of AE. So we just take all the integer combinations of the columns of AE. And in particular, uh, this vector 2222 uh, is in this lattice. Um, and then, in, so it means that the vector 1111 is in the saturation because two times this vector is in the original lattice. Um, and in fact, the saturation in this case is generated by this matrix and this uh, vector of ones. Okay. So for a given subset E, um, indexing our observed entries, the following are equivalent. Every real partial tensor TE with non-zero entries, uh, which is completable over the complex numbers, is also completable over the real numbers. The, uh, and the index of the lattice spent by the columns of AE in its saturation is odd. So uh, let's just recall, index means how many cosets um, AE has in its saturation. And moreover, whether a real partial tensor with non-zero entries, which is completable over the complex numbers, is also completable over the real numbers, depends only on the signs of the entries of TE. Okay, so once we fix E, it turns out the specific entries don't matter, only the signs matter for the real completability. Um, so let's go back to the running example. So we saw that this tensor cannot be uh, completed to a real rank one tensor. Um, 
And in fact, um, the index of the lattice spanned by the columns of AE in its saturation is two. So this doesn't yet say that this particular one isn't completed, but um, it says that not every uh, tensor that is rank one complex completable is not necessarily really completable. Okay, and then the second statement says um, is that this real rank one completability depends only on the signs. And in fact, here, the reason is um, because this entry is negative. So whenever you have a partial tensor where like these three entries are positive and this is negative, um, it never has a, a real rank one completion. But it doesn't necessarily have to be that all of them have to be positive, but there is like needs to be a correct pair of negative um, entries for real rank one completability. So finally, finally I'm going to talk about finite and unique completability. Um, an entry that has only finitely many possible values for rank one completion is called finitely completable. Um, so and in the case of two by two matrix, if three entries of rank um, one two by two matrix are given, the determinant becomes a linear polynomial determining the fourth entry. So in that case, actually the fourth entry is uniquely completable. Um, and it turns out that for generic uh, tensor TE, the set of finitely completable entries um, does not depend on the entries of T, but only on the set E. The entries that are finitely completable um, from the entries in E uh, are given actually by a matroid closure of the column matroid um, of the matrix A. So again, somehow the positions of entries are important, but not the entries uh, themselves. Um, and then, so a few words about the number of entries that we need for finite completability, because this um, uh, the the tensors of a rank at most one. Um, this is their dimension. This means that we need at least that many entries to possible to possibly uh, for the tensor to have finite completability. Um, and then my bachelor student uh, Sakko Mullemäki he did uh, some computations, and it seems that um, if we have d n minus one times the product of uh, d i plus one entries, then in fact uh, every generic D that is rank one completable is finitely completable. And here just um, an example for three by three by three tensors. So if you have observed less than seven entries, then T is not finitely completable. So here are the percentage um, of finitely completable if you observe between seven and 18 entries. Uh, so the percentages go up uh, quite quickly. And uh, if the tensor has uh, more than a uh, partial tensor has more than 18 observed entries and T is rank one completable, then it is um, finitely completable. Um, Akaya, just to say uh, five minutes. Okay, thank you. Um, and then corollary about unique completability. And now again, this is in terms of this um, matrix AE. A partial tensor with non-zero entries is uniquely completable to a complex rank one tensor if and only if it is finitely completable. And the lattice spanned by the columns of AE is saturated, meaning that if you compute the saturation of AE, then it is equal to AE. So we get the same lattice. And and this is the only case of a unique completability over complex numbers. And over real numbers, there are more possibilities. A real partial tensor with non-zero entries is uniquely completable to a real rank one tensor, if and only if um, it is finitely completable. And the index of the lattice band by the columns of A in its saturation is odd. So, uh, this is more general than 
the uh, one case. Okay, as a summary, so rank one tensor, like it's it's an algebraic problem uh, structurally, um, although it doesn't necessarily give the uh, maybe most practical algorithms for actual completion. Um, and then the lattice generated by this AE plays an important role for real rank one completability and unique completability. And as we saw that um, the specific entries are not so important, but more the indices of the observed entries and the signs uh, for studying the real or finite completability. And maybe one more thing that I didn't uh, mention here, um, but all these results come from uh, computing the Smith normal form of the matrix AE. So Smith uh, normal form is like product of three matrices where the middle matrix is diagonal. And so this is like the main tool for obtaining these results. Um, and the challenges with higher rank, uh, why I think that similar results won't hold is uh, first, the set of tensors of rank at most R is not closed, but we could then consider border rank at most R. But um, the nice thing in the rank one case is that this IDO is binomial. Uh, and this is not true in general. And in fact, the IDO is even not well understood. It's understood in some, uh, some special cases, but, but not in general. And about the matrix case, so in matrix case, also the rank two is understood by Daniel Bernstein uh, using the um, tropical geometry, but um, also in matrix case, as far as I know, like the algebraic problem uh, for rank three is not understood. This is all. Thank you very much for listening.